Welcome, in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy A17 and today I will show you how you can go through the setup process of this device. So, to get started, uh, when you boot it up for the first time, you will be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end. You can click right here, which will then allow you to choose your desired language. Now, for me, it already selected English, but God forbid I would want to ever be considered as UK. Uh, I think I prefer to pretend like I'm from US. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we have uh, then for your review, user agreement, and... Uh, Sending of diagnostic data. Oh, that's optional. So yeah, we're just gonna agree to the end user license agreement and we can go to the next page. Don't agree to the other one. Moving on, easy setup with another device. And now this actually, uh, if I go through this, should show up on my phone. Let me just go back so you can see. It automatically shows up right here, telling me that I can set up. And this will start moving over the data using, I think, Smart Switch application. So it creates a hotspot and then lets me choose what I will transfer over to this device. It's uh, pretty nice if uh, this is actually using Smart Switch, uh, though this would be lo limited to. Um, actually, no, it's not actually limited to Samsung's, as you can download Smart Switch on other devices. So you need to download that application and then you should be able to connect these phones. Now for me, it does show up automatically, so that's not a problem. Now, in any case, I'm gonna set it up manually, which means I'm not transferring over any data. And this brings me to the Wi-Fi connection page. Now, I can sign into the network, and in your case, if this device is brand new, you will be required to do so for no apparent reason uh, than Samsung just telling you, screw you, because we want you to. Um, but because I have already set this device up before, I can skip this. Like I said, I have no idea why they require you to connect the network the first time around and then after you reset the device and go to the second, it's like, oh, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter anymore. But it is what it is, just Samsung being Samsung. Uh, there's probably some creepy reason for this, but in any case, if you try to skip this and not insert a SIM card either, it will give you this pop-up that you won't have the um, wait, Wi-Fi is required to connect to the internet. Wow, no shit, Samsung. Tell me more. That's just moronic. Uh, install software updates. Yes, but also that's not the page that normally shows up right here. And use device protection features. No, that's bullshit. Uh, okay, so this is just uh, absolute BS from Samsung. Uh, uh, straight up just bullshitting their way. Holy hell, this is such a scammy shit here. Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna kind of go through this. So uh, connect to internet obviously makes sense. You're not connected to internet, so you won't have internet. Wow, who would have thunk? In any case, next one, install software updates. It makes sense if you don't have internet connection, though later on if you connect to it, that doesn't really matter. And typically you also could possibly download updates from the web onto a flash drive, plug it in and update it that way. So uh, it's kind of a BS if it works, if it actually works, but whatever. And device protection, uh, I'm just gonna debunk that right fucking now. So let's get to it. Uh, oh, actually, uh, before I get to it, let's talk about one more thing. The, the page that's supposed to show up here is the typical one, which tells you that date and time won't be set automatically, um, that you won't be able to update your device, and uh, that uh, there was one more, I don't recall what it was. Well, there were three different ones, actually ones that mattered, which Samsung decided to remove, because, you know, giving you actual information uh, of what you're not going to be able to do throughout the setup process doesn't really matter to them. It matters that you connect so they can gather data on you. Um, so here's the data and time, which isn't set automatically. Next we have protection, which apparently we can't do without internet, so... Wow, would you look at that? I have just selected a pattern that I shouldn't be able to select because... reasons. So, how about you stop lying, Samsung? Um, anyway, moving on, we have Google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. Now we can turn all of those off, but the reality here is that um, it, from Google, this is Android. Uh, there is a reason why 
companies like Google are in antitrust lawsuits. And it's not because they're so trustworthy that people decided to sue them. Next, we have Samsung services, uh, more like Samsung hindrances. So one thing that I personally despise that Samsung has implemented is the auto blocker. Now this tries to basically tell, tell you like it's such a great feature, it's only a hindrance to me. And uh, it gives you quick info, blocks apps from uh, unverified sources. How graceful of you. Um, blocks commands by USB cable. I can't how graceful for you because God forbid I want to use ADB commands. Uh, blocks malware images in messaging apps. <laughs> well, great. And blocks non-official software updates. Now, I am a pretty, I guess, advanced user of phones. And I have never managed to get a malware from an image, nor install a unofficial software update on my device. What I did actually try to do, which this option prevented me from doing, is install APKs from a uh, not Play Store. And because of that, it can go screw itself. Now, you might as well use this as much as you can right now before Google themselves, that is making Android, next year implements an update that blocks you from installing APKs altogether. Now, because this isn't out yet and we don't really know much, if you're thinking of having some kind of applications later on uh, that will require you to download them from, I don't know, like some kind of, uh, let's just say GitHub, for instance. People make applications on GitHub and post them. Uh, most of these people probably will not go through the process of uh, being a verified developer for these applications. Therefore, you wouldn't be able to install them. So Chase, you have two choices in the future next year. One would be to not update your device to the newest Android and just turn off auto updates, which would be probably the option that I would go with. Uh, or two, and this one is more iffy, download these applications right now and never delete them. Uh, chances are that maybe once the update rolls out, these applications will be still usable, but this is just me guessing. So I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, moving on, we have some customizing services. Uh, I can go over this. I'm gonna keep it as it is. Inside like agree. Then we can choose our theme, light or dark mode. Completely up to you which one you want. And we're all set, so let's click home. And you can see this takes us back to, not back, but takes us to our home screen with the device fully set up. And because I didn't connect to the network, I can see that if I swipe up, I have a bunch of these weird looking apps because they require in a connection to be downloaded. Uh, they are supposedly not default Android applications. Uh, even though they try to pretend like they are and some of them are very odd like clock calendar and the browser for instance uh, so you need to connect the network to download these applications or, or samsung will down download them for you without a question uh, and option so yeah. now in any case if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching